Okay, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this month's Black History Series presentation titled The Colors of Essex County, Historic African Canadian Cemeteries. Today's guest speaker is Elise Harding Davis. She is an author, educator, African Canadian heritage consultant, and former curator administrator of the North American Black Historical Museum and Cultural Center, which is now the Amherstburg Freedom Museum. Elise retired as the curator slash administrator after 32 years of dedicated service. She has taught Black Studies at St. Clair College since 1993 and networked widely with numerous international educational facilities. She was also an executive administrator at Hotel Du Grace Hospital for six years and was involved in the review slash revision of policy and procedure to ensure diversity and culture competency. Among her accomplishments, Elise is the author of numerous articles in both newspapers papers and magazines and several books including The Black Presence in the War of 1812 which chronicles black military involvement. Elise was a core member of the African Canadian Tour Program and acts as a tour guide in addition to working with police forces for several years to devise less biased hiring practices for women, indigenous and black persons and the disabled. She has also supported and educated youth helping them to develop improved self-image and seek positive seek post secondary education. Elise has received many awards Awards, letters of appreciation and certificates of merit, including both the Golden and Diamond Queen Elizabeth II Jubilee Medals for her tireless service. And she also recently was invested as a member of the Order of Ontario. We are very excited for Elise to give her presentation today. Uh, while Elise is presenting, if you could all please turn off your camera and mute your microphones as to not distract Elise. Uh, following her presentation, she will also uh, be doing a Q&A. So just type your questions in the comment section or you can raise your hand and I will call on you. And that, at that point, you're all welcome to turn your cameras back on and uh, unmute your microphone. Uh, one final note, if you would like to support programming such as our Black History series, you are uh, welcome to donate by going to our website, amosburgfreedom.org. And now I'll turn things over to Elise. So thank you so much for joining us, and I will uh, hand it over to you. Thank you, Lorreen. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I'm considering this my actual first Black History Month presentation. Oh, here um, she is. Lisa's Starting talking. Starting Lisa's talking now, right? Is, okay, thank you. Yeah, I um, just wanted to say that um, starting with uh, an event with the museum is really heartwarming to me because uh, it's where I spent so much of my life and it's wonderful to see them continuing on um, and doing such a good job. Now, if we could get started with the presentation, I will uh, have the things to say and answer any questions or comments when it's over. Can you see the presentation on the screen? I'll go ahead and do full screen. Okay, Can you I'll see it on the screen? Know. Not yet. Can you see it now? No, I can just see your initials. There we go. Okay, you can see it now? I can, thank you. Okay, perfect. I will go ahead and prompt it to full screen then. The Colors of Essex County um, was an idea that came to me. <clears throat> the title is representative of the fact that there are so many cultures represented in Essex County, but my color stands out to me, just like leaves in the fall, all the different hues that are represented. And then of course, uh, I've been working on preserving and getting heritage status for cemeteries for over 50 years. And, um, you know, Graveyards are very informative places. I have always loved to go through graveyards and read the stones. Uh, you can get so much information. Next slide. Lorraine, can we move on to the next slide, please? 
Oh, it, sh it should have prompted to the next one. Oh, there we are. You got it? Okay, now it might be a little delayed. Yes. Okay, no problem. We'll just go at a pace that's good for all of us. Um, before we go any further, I'd like to state that um, I had an operation on my throat uh, last year and I'm still having some issues with volume. So just please bear with me. I'm pretty good. This is our acknowledgement to Turtle Island. We acknowledge the first peoples on whose traditional territories we live and work. We show recognition of and respect for Aboriginal peoples, acknowledging their presence both in the past and the present. Recognition and respect are essential elements of establishing healthy reciprocal relations. These relations are the key to reconciliation a process to which we are committed. And we will continue to work with our Aboriginal brothers and sisters to promote their wellness and well-being through uh, public investments in Indigenous education, health care, and social work. Next slide. This slide is of Mother Africa. And I always include it in many of my uh, PowerPoint presentations because this is where people of African origins originate from. And further to that, and more importantly, although many people don't grasp it as yet, we all come from Africa. It is the crucible of all human form. Olduvai Gorge is where they found the oldest skeleton of human remains. But from the African Canadian point of view, they're now estimating at least 60,000 people came to Canada via the Underground Railroad, but that over 3 million were stolen and sold from the African continent and brought to the New World. Next slide. This is early Essex County, and you'll see on that slide that it uh, says 1792. So Essex County has been in existence for that long. And I'm going to walk you through this county, showing you grave sites and black settlements. Next slide, please. This slide is of the road to the Negro purchase. The blue arrow points to exactly those words on this map from 1803 uh, by surveyor Thomas Smith. So blacks have been here every bit as long as most of the other colonial cultures, the French and the British. Next slide. These are black settlement areas uh, going back to as early as 1792. Hopetown, which I will speak about later, is starred on this map. It was a community on the third concession near Drummond Road, just outside of the town of Harrow. And I have found information in the Ontario archives that date back to the 1790s for Black Settlement. Next slide. These are African Canadian settlements in Essex County. And you can see there are multitudes of stars and names where we settled 
all along the Great Lakes because that was the highway of the day. And in 1818, the boundary between Canada and the United States was officially done. And so having heard about freedom in Canada, particularly through the War of 1812, when black men fought and were actually uh, located at Fort Malden. Uh, that's a whole nother book that I have written, as Lorene stated earlier, about blacks in the War of 1812. It's been my mission to establish that African Canadians, black people of African origins, have been here in Canada. We are the fourth founding pioneering culture. Next slide. This is a map of where 13 black cemeteries are sited in Essex County. And again, as you can see, they're largely along the borderway of the rivers, either the Detroit River or Lake St. Clair up at the top. And they include, and I'll read from my book because my old eyes don't see as well as they once did. You've got the, um, just give me a moment while I get to that page. And you'll be able to get this book at the museum when it does, uh, when we finish with this. And if you're interested in getting any of the information, uh, the book is $25, $5 of which goes to the museum. We've got Central Grove Church Cemetery. We've got Gilgal or Taylor Cemetery, Harrow British Methodist Episcopal Cemetery, Malden Mount Pleasant Cemetery, Nazarene African Methodist Episcopal Church National Historic Site Memorial Cemetery, New Canaan Cemetery, Puse Memorial Cemetery, Shiloh Baptist Church Cemetery, St. Mark's Cemetery, the Puce River Black Community Cemetery, Walls Family Cemetery, Hope Town Cemetery, and Smith Cemetery. Those are the 13 cemeteries that I had already had given historical designation in 2013. A cemetery plot was generally, it was called a church site cemetery plot, was generally um, able to hold 500 grave sites, 500 plots. Mm -hmm. So you figure just these 13, and since that time I found about five more, but 13 times 500 is 6,500 potential burials. The number of black people in Essex County in 1812 was 4,000. So a lot of uh, our ancestors are buried here and uh, we're constantly trying to enlarge the number of family members and neighbors that we know about. Next slide, please. This is Central Grove, and it is located at 4005 Walker Road. Central Grove as a church was established in 1911. However, the cemetery has been there since the 1860s. A portion of property from a Mr. McCurdy was donated for blacks to be buried at the Central Grove which has special meaning to black people. It is a central grove, meaning central to the black community in that region. And the grove is a stand of trees where before the church was even erected, black people 
the Johnson family, the Simpson family, the Wilsons, the Mulders, went to praise God and sometimes have church camp meetings that would last as long as a week. And the Banks family are buried here at Central Grove as well. Next slide. This is Gilgal or the Taylor Cemetery because the only marker left on that site at Walker Road, which is County Road 11 these days, is a site, uh, a, a marker dedicated to a Mr. Taylor. A lot of these cemetery sites have, um, I'm gonna say unfortunate information attached to them. For quite some time, the owner of the farm adjacent to that cemetery plot farmed over it. And local Blacks in our community from Central Grove and from St. Mark's um, <coughs> gently asked that he uh, not park his farm equipment on that site. And um, over the years, agreements were made and uh, now that site is as you see it in the picture. Next slide. This is a picture of the Harrow British Methodist Episcopal Church Cemetery site at 25 Walnut Street in Harrow, Ontario. This site is located behind the grocery store, behind the main street in Harrow. When I told you I had been um, trying to preserve cemetery sites for over 50 years, this is the one that really reached into my heart and made me decide that I had to do something. It was derelict. Weeds were as high as five feet. There were broken markers piled around a tree. And this site was used for overflow parking for the Harrow Fair on a yearly basis. I went to the town with a partner of mine, uh, Ken Turner, who worked with cemetery sites and was on the Ontario History Society's board for cemetery preservation. And uh, another person, Nancy Allen, who spoke for the BME Church Conference, um, petitioned the town to preserve this site. And so it was made a heritage site. A friend of mine by the name of Norn Becker, who was a professional engineer, helped put the markers back together, the fence and gate come from China, where I traveled with Norm back in 2002. And the Horticultural Society here in the community planted all of the shrubbery that you will see they came and asked me if I would help them choose things that were representative of the black community. And there are lilacs, there are black eyed Susans, um, there are roses, primroses. It's one of the most beautiful cemetery sites in the entire area. There's something in bloom, there's color there all year round. And I'm very, very proud of the fact that the town now takes care of this site. Next slide, please. While we're waiting, um, Reverend Noah Cannon, the first itinerant minister who came from uh, Mother Beulah Church in Philadelphia, the AME Church Conference, is buried there. 
This next site is Mount Pleasant Memorial Cemetery at the rear of the Nazare AME Church National Historic Site at 277 King Street, which is the Amherstburg Freedom Museum's location. These markers came jumbled up broken pieces in the back of a truck. And a local farmer said, uh, came into the museum and said to me, I've got some uh, junk out here in the back of my truck that you might like. Uh, otherwise it's going to the dump. Well, I went and I looked and I saw some of the names, uh, Bell, Bayless, and I knew that there had been a black church and cemetery site on uh, the sixth concession in um, Malden. And so I said, yes, we'll take it. We held it in the uh, museum site for numerous years. And when the uh, Nazare African Methodist Episcopal Church became a national historic site, we decided to put this memorial to those individuals at the back of the church. That farmer grew potatoes on that site. And to this date, we have not been able to have it locally, provincially, or federally claimed a protected African Canadian cemetery site, but I'm still working on it. Next slide, please. This is the North American Black Historical Museum, formerly it was, where I spent so many years dedicating my life to um, trying to preserve the thought process of the founders of the museum Melvin, Mac, and Betty Simpson. This site is a beacon of hope to Black people across North America and in fact across the world. Um, when I first started there as a volunteer, I would sit at the front desk and hope somebody called or came in. To the height of my career at the museum, when we had tour buses lined halfway around the block, people coming from all over North America, people arranging tours, uh, a twin city to the city of Windsor in Japan actually asked that they be brought to that museum to visit when they came to visit the city of Windsor. I'm so very proud of the people who are working there, Mary Catherine and Lorraine and the board of directors to keep that place going because we have helped the world to understand that black people, enslaved people and oppressed free blacks came to this community and spread out through Canada to make us the black thread in the Canadian tapestry. And I tell people, you know, without black history, history is incomplete. Without knowing about the black culture and our contributions, a person's education is not complete. Next slide, please. This is a New Canaan, Chavis, Davis Cemetery on County Road 12, the Gesto Road in Colchester North Township, Essex County. This is where Delos Rojas Davis was buried. The first black man to locally become a lawyer who became, uh, who got that entitlement in 1882. He uh, 
was not able to art article with lawyers like young white men wanting to be lawyers could do at that time and young black women a, a short time later. And he wrote the exam, was given the entitlement to do so and passed third in his class. Um, Davis was a teacher, a fireman, and some of the legislations uh, he passed as a civil engineer still stand to this day. He helped to map out a large parts of the town of Essex and had a business in Amherstburg. And in the museum, there is a double-sided desk that belonged to Delos Rogers Davis and his son, Fred, who was also a litigant. Next slide, please. This is Puce Memorial Cemetery on County Road 42 in Maidstone Township, Lakeshore, Ontario. This uh, cemetery was designated to the British Methodist Episcopal Church. In 1932, County Road 42, which was then old number two highway was widened and 30 feet from the front of that cemetery was demolished. And some of the rubble and stones were put to the back of the cemetery. In uh, 2011, a friend of mine who's worked with me to preserve cemeteries through the Lakeshore Black Heritage Committee, Glenn Cook, called me and said, Elise, you know, we talked about the fact that you thought part of your family was buried at that Puce Memorial Cemetery. He said, well, I found a marker there and uh, I want you to listen to me while I read what is on it. Next slide, please. It reads the tombstone of Elizabeth Lee wife of Ludwell Lee and their son, James. At the time of writing the book, this marker, which had been broken and honestly raised up out of the ground was under reconstruction. My grandfather took me to this cemetery numerous times looking for this marker. Ludwell Lee was my four times great grandfather. He was born a slave in Virginia and his mother, Kissy, was the daughter of Light Horse Harry Lee by a, a black slave woman whose name we've never found out. But that makes Kissy the half sister of General Robert E. Lee, the leader of the Confederate Army during the Civil War. Many Blacks whose families have been here in Essex County and beyond have been here since the late 1700s. And we were the descendants of slaves who were owned by prominent white pioneers of the United States. Remember that the whole of North America was under British rule when it started out. The pioneers that came out to North America were largely British and the area, the 13 colonies was along the Atlantic sea coast. In Canada, the French were the first to um, colonize with the help of a man by the name of Matthew da Costa, who was a free black navigator who brought Samuel de Champlain to Canada. And da Costa was an interpreter 
who interpreted between the Mi'kmaq Indians and the French. And ladies and gentlemen, in my mind, that makes settlement in North America circa 1604, which is before the Americans in 1619, responsible to a black individual. Next slide, please. This is the Puce River Black Community Cemetery site, and it has Ontario Heritage Site Trust plaque there through the efforts of Glenn Cook and the Lakeshore Black Heritage Community. When Glenn was a young boy, his grandfather would drive him from Maidstone into Windsor along Old Number Two and point out to him this site which at that time looked abandoned, uh, you have family buried there. And so when Glenn got older, he wanted to find out just what had gone on. And he and his sister Lynn searched through the registry and searched through family records and found that uh, that 0.2 hectares of property had been deeded in 1872 from the Refugee Home Society to the British Methodist Episcopal Church Conference. And they erected a church that served Puce and Maidstone area until the 1920s. Next slide, please. This is a monument to Lewis Jackson, and on it, it states, born a slave in Kentucky. It is the only remaining marker at the Puce River Black Community Cemetery. This marker, when you have a chance to look at it, was re-erected by Ken Turner. Um, it had been stolen. Word was put out in the community that it was stolen. And in the dark of night, it was brought back and dumped in the ditch in front of the cemetery site. And Glenn had Ken come and resurrect it to its present place. Around it are small little Oh, they're not even 12 inches wide markers for some of the children that Lewis and his wife had had who had died. It is one of the few markers I know in all of Canada that has on it, born a slave. It is a very significant marker. And Lewis Jackson was also the half brother of uh, Henry Bibb. So there's a lot of history attached to this particular marker. Next slide, please. Each year, Glen Hole holds a, hen, a homecoming at that site and the musician, museum gets information about that. Our next marker is the Shiloh Baptist Cemetery, just outside of Kingsville. on North Division Road, Gossfield Township, Kingsville, Ontario. Ken Turner and I, and a few other people, his wife and uh, a few other individuals who d have been with heirs, did a dig there. And all we found was the base of a grave stone several bottles, uh, things dating back to the late 1800s. And so we search for a stone to put up a dedication. And we found one that is black granite with white striations that look like waves, which is so 
fitting. You know, we've got so many songs dealing with wade across the water and uh, black slaves being carried across the Middle Passage and our coming into Canada across the Detroit River and across the end of Lake Erie into Amherstburg. Um, it's very significant, again, some of the people who went to the Shiloh Baptist Church, which was on this site, were United Empire Loyalists, Black United Empire Loyalists, who had property in Gossfield going back to the late 1700s, early 1800s. And on the back of that marker, we have put family names with where their property was located, what, what concession and what lot number. So that when people visit this site, they can take a map and go see where their ancestors are buried. I myself have ancestors connected with this, the Henderson family and the Jacobs family came together across Point Pelee into Gossfield and settled there. The museum has information, information on Lieutenant Colonel retired Kenneth B. Jacobs. He was the first black man to reach that designation in the Canadian Armed Services. And Ken ended up being the head of the entire social services program for all of Canada's military worldwide. Next slide. You know, you can take the map that I showed you earlier and travel around the county and find all of these sites. Um, there's a real sense of reverence when you uh, get to these places. This site is uh, St. Mark Cemetery uh, on the Dunn Road in Colchester uh, Township, uh, Essex Township now, formerly uh, the town of Harrow. St. Mark Cemetery dates back to the 1840s with a, a Reverend Ruth being buried there. It's in two parts. The front part, you will see this marker and present day burials because it's still being used as a cemetery site. The back part, you go over a little ridge, a little rise, and you'll find markers scattered throughout. Uh, Reverend Ruth, as I said, uh, the Greer family have plots there. The Mulder family have plots there. It's, it's very significant to the community. And the Dunn Road is, we could call it our first lady in uh, Colchester because all the different cultures came along the Detroit River and came up in uh, Colchester, you know, the Colchester Beach area. And just adjacent to that is the Dunn Road, and it leads you on into Canada. Uh, Fred Johnson lived on the Dunn Road. Um, he was a very beloved farmer and storyteller in our community and lived to be over 100 and wrote a book about his family. Next slide, please. Here we have the John Freeman Walls historic site and cemetery. 
located on uh, 859 Puce Road, Maidstone Township, Lakeshore, Ontario. The Walls family history is very renowned through a book written by Dr. Brian Walls, um, The Road That Led to Freedom. In 1846, John Freeman Walls, a fugitive slave from North Carolina, built a log cabin on land purchased from the Refugee Home Society that I spoke about when we talked about the Puce Memorial Cemetery. The cabin subsequently served as a terminus on the Underground Railroad and was the first meeting place for the Puce Baptist Church. Although many former enslaved people returned to the United States following the American Civil War, Walls and his family chose to remain here in Canada. And it is a, a sacred site. All of these cemeteries are sacred sites. Next slide, please. There are other African Canadian cemeteries of significance, one being Hope Town, which as I explained to you earlier, was located uh, approximately outside of Harrow on the third concession at the Drummond Road. Um, recently, a marker from that cemetery was found being used as a stepping stone into a farmer's barn. One of the family contacted me with the information and I contacted Richard uh, Matthews because it was one of his ancestors whose marker it was and it was retrieved and Richard now has it in safekeeping. As I said, it's it's the story of black cemeteries is kind of a kind of a sad process. However, um, I take great pride, and so do many other African Canadians and Eurocentric Canadians in the fact that we have looked for these abandoned cemetery sites, reestablished them, found their proper owners, some being the British Methodist Episcopal Church Conference, and regardless of who they belong to or why they laid uncared for, we have taken them into our arms and given them back their significance and their glory. And the Smith Cemetery that's here was later after 2013 um, became a national, uh, actually a, an Ontario Heritage Trust site as well. And it became known as the Banwell Road Black Settlement Cemetery because people around uh, Banwell Road, there was Priceville, Hillville, Payneville, different family names that we know currently who had family settlements along County Road 42, again, the old uh, number two, near the Windsor Airport. And uh, it's largely the Smith family whose markers are left there. There are seven markers, I believe. And so it, it was called the Smith Cemetery for many, many years. Next slide, please.
In praise of Canada's fourth group of pioneers, the black thread in the Canadian tapestry, which is a phrase I coined because the Essex County tartan has very vivid and beautiful colors, yellow for the wheat, green for the crops, blue for the waters, and black for the soil. But in my mind, the black was the black thread that outlined all of these different colors to make them stand out so vividly. And in this picture, you'll see myself, Mr. Fred Johnson in the back, in front, his wife, Ivy, and at back, uh, excuse me, next to Ivy, Glovanna Brooks Johnson, who was a staunch member of the museum and who did marvelous research on Black United Empire loyalists. These people were my mentors. And I impressed upon you that they were ordinary everyday people, not great scholars, not great industrialists, but in my mind, they were both because they took pride in themselves. They helped me to understand that a little black girl could climb to the heights that I have only and specifically by being proud of the fact that I am black. I have one of the finest pedigrees there is. I am a descendant of enslaved people who escaped, who got up and walked away. My great grandfather was born in Missouri a slave in 1823. George Madison was his name. He was the son of his slave master. He walked from Missouri to Detroit, Michigan, sold, sold fish for four years, walked back to Missouri and bought his wife and four oldest children from the slave master. He actually took the money for the purchase of his grandchildren. And that family walked back to Canada across Bottle Island when it was frozen into Kent County. And Grandpa Madison had a slave coach servicing the black community from Dresden to Windsor and worked with the Janice family, Janice Funeral Homes, to bring the black bodies of people back from the United States and from the, the surrounding areas, that's a bit of our separate but equal. That's another story. But again, I want to say to you, without positive Black history, without his, Black history overall, all history is incomplete. So I thank you so much for being with me today. And uh, any questions you might have or any comments, I'd be glad to hear. Okay, thank you so much, Elise. That was fantastic. Thank you for sharing your story and also all of the work that you've done to restore these cemeteries. Um, I will monitor the chat. So if anyone has any questions or if you wanted to just raise your hand, uh, you're welcome to, and you can ask Elise your question. Um, I wanted to start off by asking a question. I'll give you a moment to take a, a sip and then I'll ask. Thank you. <laughs> so I've, I'm sure you've read documents where it talks about cemeteries in the area. Is there any that you haven't found evidence of, are still searching for evidence of a cemetery? You've seen it mentioned in a document, but it, you haven't been able to find a marker to, to show where it is? Um, 
one of those sites was where Louisa Payne was buried off of uh, old number two, County Road 42. Oh, yes. And um, there is a cemetery there. But we That's weren't aware that black people were buried there until more recently. And, and this has been one of the issues as well. Um, black cemeteries and white cemeteries were not necessarily, were never um, mandated to be separate. But when we came to Canada, because black cemeteries, or let's say black burials, were often not marked or not known in the United States, we wanted to make sure that our loved ones had a sacred place to rest. And as time went on and the communities became form more com familiar with each other, then blacks and whites started to be buried together. In fact, they married into each other's families. And so this is how we are finding some of our more recent finds. Excellent. Um, I had a question that was asked on Facebook earlier from someone named Derek Cook. Um, and he asked if you had ever found the cemetery in Harrow. He didn't go into specifics, but I'm not sure if, if you know, if you've had a discussion with him about this or. Um, Derek Cook used to work with Parks Canada and uh, we partnered on a lot of situations. Um, he's definitely talking about the um, British Methodist Episcopal Cemetery in uh, Harrow, in downtown okay. Harrow. That you talked about. Okay, perfect. Yes. Okay, uh, we do have a question from Milo. Uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you want and ask your question. I, I don't know if, oh, you can hear me. Okay. Yes, yes Milo, I can hear you. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. What's your question? Unmute yourself. You can also type it in the, the comment section if you're having trouble with your mic and I can read it for you. We've had comments in the comment section as well. Just thanking you so much for your presentation. You're a remarkable woman. Uh, we also had someone write that they are an archeologist and archivist from Detroit area studying black burial grounds of the Great Lakes slash Midwest. Very informative, can't wait to come to Canada. Uh, other messages of thanks as well. Um, okay. Lorraine, and, I would like to give people my new email address. My email was hacked. And the email that's out in the whole world no longer works. My new email is eHardingDavis at gmail.com. And so if I want to connect. I've typed it into the chat as well, eHardingDavis at gmail.com. So if anyone wants Thanks. to speak with Elise, I've typed it in the chat. Uh, Donna, you can go ahead and ask your question as well. Hi, Elise. It's Donna. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, Donna. I'm wonderful. I'd like people to know before Donna goes on that she is the lady who put my name forward for the Order of Ontario. And I just, I'm so grateful for all the hard work she did for that to happen. But uh, Donna is also a great person in her own right. She has a, a podcast and uh is really preserving a lot of our African Canadian history through her work. Thanks, Donna. Thank you. It was my pleasure to nominate you. And I was so, I so enjoyed that evening. It was a great time being there at the order of uh, Ontario. It was lots of fun. And, um, but I wanted to ask you this summer, as I was traveling, collecting stories, I came, I got to visit the Shiloh Baptist church in Saskatchewan. And I'd heard about a, a couple of other Shiloh churches. And you just mentioned, a Shiloh Baptist Church in, I think, did you say Maidstone? Was it Maidstone? Yes. Or? Okay. So do you know yes. if there's any kind of connection? I mean, what is, what is the Shiloh and is there a connection to each each of them? Well, excuse me. Shiloh, the one we were talking about, was in um, Kingsville, just outside Kingsville, of Kingsville. Sorry. But uh, Shiloh Baptist Church, um, 
there are a couple of old wives tales connections. Uh, Shiloh Baptist Church, of course, in the United States. And so uh, different groups who came from those areas in the South would come and rename their churches uh, in commemoration of those churches. Also, several black men who fought in um, the War of Independence fought at Shiloh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when they came back or their families commemorated them, they named the church Shiloh. And we believe that's what happened with Ch Shiloh Baptist Church in Kingsville. Okay. Thank you. Great. Uh, we have a question in the chat, but Milo, you had your hand up earlier and I noticed you just re-entered the chat. Did you want to try asking your question again? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. yes, yes. Okay, my my question is about the uh, Matthew Cemetery on the corner of uh, Drummond and the Third Concession. You said that you contacted Richard Matthews that they had found a stone from that cemetery. Correct. So my question is, they haven't definitely um, designated a spot on that property which was lot five used to be Matthew Matthews property. Have you right. made any progress on that? No, um, Milo, sometimes progress is very slow. Um, I welcome other people to join in with me. Um, I'm hoping that this Order of Ontario designation gives me a little bit more clout However, um, the work is still in progress. So if you're if you're willing to chat with me about it, please do. Sure, I, I know the people who live there now sent me a message and they were concerned because they wanted to build a barn and they didn't want to build it on a cemetery. You know, that's uh, why I was concerned. Correct. And they it. should get in touch with the town. You know, okay. um, in the past, a lot of this kind of information has been kept kind of closed and within our own community. And, and we know people, like you're saying, that live on the property and they talk with us. But in order for it to happen properly, you have to go to the right authorities. And they have to do it because it's their property. Right. But we can support them. Thank you. Okay, so there was a question in the chat um, from Matthew. Uh, I really appreciate your presentation. I was wondering why the Smith Cemetery along Banwell Road is framed differently than the others you shared with us today. Do you need I'm maybe not... further explanation about that? Maybe Matthew, you can. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite understanding what you mean framed differently. It's an on. Ontario Heritage Trust site, but so is the uh, Puce Cemetery site. Um, we've got several uh, Ontario Heritage Trust sites now. You can go on their um, website and, and look at them. But the uh, Smith Cemetery was um, adjacent to a settlement that goes back to 1838. Some of the people who lived there, the men had fought in the rebellion of 1837, 38, uh, names like Patterson and Smith, as I said. And um, it is not a, a unique designation, but it is amongst a growing designation of that type. I hope that's answered your question. Uh, Matthew did put a follow-up comment. Um, I was mostly curious since it was started on the original map and didn't sound like it had as much information at this time. Uh, when I wrote the book, correct. But then it was designated and um, you can look it up and find out more information on it. Okay. And we're and kind of... Uh, 
we're kind of concerned about that site these days because there's talk that with um, a new hospital going in down County Ward 42, actually the Smith site, the Pews Memorial and the Pews Black Community Settlement Cemetery uh, could all be endangered because they're gonna have to widen County Road 42 again. That is the reason that's amongst many, but one of the significant reasons why I myself and several other people have been out there trying to get these cemetery sites designated so that they're not uh, concreted over and turned into parking lots or uh, pulled into subdivisions or obliterated. That's a really that's valid yeah, that's a really valid point that you make about development happening. So again, we're very grateful for the work that you have done in the past and the work you continue to do. Um, there are no other questions, but just a final comment uh, from Donna. Again, just thanking you for uh, giving a shout out to her podcast, their podcast, I Am I am a Black History, and the link is in the chat as well, uh, www.intheblackcanada.ca. So if anyone's interested in checking that out, it's in the chat as well. Um, and I just wanted to end by just, again, I can't thank you enough for giving this presentation Lorraine, today. It was so interesting. Lorene, can I uh, interrupt you for one second? Yes, Hand absolutely. Hand is up. Oh, yes. Yes, go ahead, Nancy. You can ask your question. <coughs> this is the same Nancy that Elise had referred to in the presentation earlier as well with her work with the BME Church. So you can unmute yourself, Nancy, if you'd like. Well, you know, I just want to thank Elise. She's been a friend. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Nancy. I just want to thank Elise. She's been a friend for a long time, but I find when she gives a, a talk about something, there's always other issues that sort of uh, uh, are brought up and then you're anxious to get to that. And this is the first time really I've had any presentation about cemeteries. My question is, uh, you mentioned the Ontario Heritage Trust. Is that a fund or is that what they use the word Ontario. It's a, it's a trust situation. Uh, it was set up by um, Lincoln Alexander. And it is a, a, a foundation to which people can apply for that status as an Ontario Heritage Trust site. These days, I believe there's a $5,000 um, fee as such. Um, often when people apply to the trust, they will then come and uh, either do a, um, you know, a scanning of the site, um, but you've got to have your information in order, you know, old deeds or old, um, bits of uh, writing that indicate that there is a cemetery there and who it belongs to. For instance, with the Banwell Cemetery site, um, it was abandoned for years and years, right up until the time it was designated, to be honest. But the town of Tecumseh, um, who had been helping to keep the site up, you know, cutting the grass and things like that, once we went to them to say it was there, found that it um, was under the auspices of the British Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, some of the church sites, the cemeteries particularly, because if the churches are gone, then the cemeteries are abandoned. Some of the newer trustees, are not aware of these sites. People like ourselves, Nancy, have had probably, I'd say, better information because we're generational Canadians, uh, African Canadians whose families 
actually founded these places. And as ownership of some of the different conferences or some of the different groups that work with black society come into the fold, they aren't aware of the structure of it. That's one of the other reasons I wrote this book. Well, I'm glad you wrote the book. I have two concerns. One is I appreciate uh, what you've told us today. There are a number of cemeteries that we don't know anything about. Lucan, for example, some lady told me there were a lot of headstones that people took home and put in their gardens for stepping stones. So that's yeah. uh, one area. There's a place outside of Hamilton she told me about. My concern is that we need to somehow get together and make up a map that is it's very, as concise as possible. So as we're out traveling around, we could notice where these new cemeteries are and do something about identifying them. Um, the second thing is I received a call from the BME church headquarters about a church in Shrewsbury. The interesting part is that on that site, there's a Baptist church on one corner and the BME church, which is no longer there, but supposedly was there in 1841, they want our conference to pay for all of the upkeep of this property. So that's why I was interested in the Heritage Trust to see if somebody can help us. Because as you know, most churches today don't have a lot of funds to use to pay for the grass cutting and all the rest of the church. But I thank you because I'm really, I'm really stirred up now. I think it's time to say thank you very much and just leave it and let's keep the lines open so that we can somehow talk to each other when we make a discovery about one of these cemeteries. My friend, I agree with you 100%, Nancy. Uh, we've known each other since we were children, which is way too long for most people to even understand. Um, the church that you're talking about, the the Baptist church, my great grandfather was one of the founders of that church, Thomas Jesse Henderson. You and I spoke about that. When individuals come to the conference and ask them for upkeep on particular properties, they first have to give uh, some legal documents that show that that was actually there. And if it was uh, either turned over or sold to one conference to the other, the Baptist mm -hmm. to the BME, um, then there should be some there should be some paperwork somewhere to indicate that. And working as groups, um, you and I have worked together before. We, you and I are both looking for other people to step into the, the trenches with us because we are not little girls anymore. Um, and this is an extremely important issue because without these cemetery sites, we honestly don't know how many black people came here. And without these cemetery sites, did we even exist in Canada? Are we just myth? Was there once upon a time a group of black people and now they're all gone? Those have always been my concerns. So let's talk a little bit more. And anybody else who would like to come into the fray, please do so or speak to your friends and find out if there are other people who can, en we can enlist their aid because it is a lot of work, believe me, but it's worth it. Amen. Thank you, Elise. Thank you. And again, I put Elise's uh, email in the chat, eharding, H-A-R-D-I-N-G, davis at gmail.com ehardingdavis at gmail.com. If anyone who is listening would like to reach out to Elise 
um, to, as she said, assist with uh, the work that she's doing and that Nancy's doing. Uh, so it, it is there as well in the chat too for anyone who would like to contact them. Uh, and uh, it looks like we are good for the chat. There's no more questions, uh, no more hands raised. Uh, so I will uh, just end by again, thanking you so much, Elise, for everything that you do to preserve cemeteries in this area. I do absolutely agree with you that they are a physical example uh, that exists to show the importance of these communities. Uh, oftentimes uh, buildings like churches don't exist anymore. So we look to cemeteries to tell that history. So thank you so much for preserving that. And uh, uh, I don't know if you had any final words to give everyone. Uh, if not, I can end now, but I'll, I'll let you say a final word if you'd like. And thank you also everyone for joining us today. Your uh, attendance is appreciated. Yes, those were uh, some of my comments. However, I'd also like to thank the museum for this opportunity. Um, pretty well, everyone who's on this call uh, is involved in black history in some aspect or involved with cemeteries. We're the people who are the backbone of keeping the history of this country alive. Thank you so much for what you do. And I hope you all continue in good health and keep in touch so we can uh, continue on our march. And I will leave it at that. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.